Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hales and today I'm going to show you how I recovered my IKEA tub chair. Today I'm showing you a chair which I recovered quite a few months ago, but I just haven't got around to filming it. So I have got progress shots of how I did it and I will talk you through each step on how I ended up with this from the sorry state that what it was originally in. The Ikea chair, I think it's the Tulster tub chair is what it's called. That was, it was quite a few years old now and it had faded in the sun. It had sort of some water stains on it from like drinks spills on it. It was disgusting, it was really mingy and it was disgusting. But the cat, like my daughter's cat, he liked to sit on it and sleep on it in the sun because we were in a sunny conservatory. This is also, by the way, where my sewing is, which is just over here. So if anyone's seen my previous videos, you'll know our conservatory is south facing the glass roof and it's a real sun trap and the cat absolutely loves it. And I didn't want to get rid of the chair and then he sleeps on all my other furniture and then we get fur and hair and ugh, disgusting. So we're gonna keep him confined to one chair, but also I didn't want it looking like a complete eyesore, I want something a bit pretty to look at. I also, I lit, or after I recovered the chair, I then wanted a footstool to match. So I got this one, I think it was from the range, it was quite a cheapy one, but I had some leftover fabric so I used that to recover that, which I'll also show you at the end how I did that. And I also made a couple of cushions to go with my furniture at the other end of the room, so it all kind of links in. The fabric is upholstery fabric, which I got from John Lewis online, and it was in sales. So it was only six pounds a meter. I think I bought about seven meters, because I had no idea how much I'd need, because I couldn't figure it out. I think five would be plenty, because I had quite a bit left over, hence recovering the footstool and making some Sagata cushions. So just so you know, so if you get about five meters, you'll have plenty to cover everything. The other, the other thing is, I suppose, if you're covering a different kind of tub chair, this doesn't have the material all the way through the back. This is the original fabric that came with the IKEA chair, which I then, I unpicked from the cream fabric and then stitched it onto the pattern fabric and just reused it and also if I take that off I don't know if you can see oh I use um something like that in focus this is like a rubbery mat and it comes on a roll I got it from like a pound shop and I put it here because the tendency is once you're sitting on the chair it will kind of ease its way out and slide out which is really annoying but by putting that piece of rubber matting on that does help to keep the cushion the seat pad in place if i can find some which is very similar i will put a link down in the description box below just so you can find out if you want to do that as well so i used the original cover and unpicked it all and used that as pattern pieces to then do this one so i'll show you how i made it I turned the chair upside down and unscrewed all four of the legs so I could access the staples. I also labelled with a pen, I just wrote onto the original fabric centre left and right and like front and back from when I was going to take it off so I knew the order of the panels when they go back together again. I used hand tools to unpick all the staples from the bottom and I was then able to pull the cover away from the chair which pulled out some of the inside staples which was quite handy. I was then left with the shell of the chair and it did have the original wadding on. I didn't have any fresh stuff so ideally you really want to probably change that. I had the cover and it came off in one piece so I then unpicked it all and created separate pattern pieces which I laid on my fabric um, pattern side up so that I could see where the pattern was going to sit once it was going to be on the chair. The fabric which was at the bottom of going to be at the bottom of the chair, I ran through the overlocker so that um, it wasn't going to fray out when I put it near the staples. Once it was sewn, all the pieces were sewn together, I then placed them over the back of the chair and got my electric staple gun out. And this is really essential for doing one of these chairs. So you pull the fabric as tight as you can 
so that you can staple it from the bottom and from the inside and then I have a panel which covers those staples up as well so that tucks it in quite nicely and this is from the original chair I sewed it onto the flowered flowery fabric and then that went over that overlapped some of the original pieces the seat pad I used the original zip so I unpicked it and then attached it to my new seat pad and that was then able to fit around my cushion it was a little bit snug because it it wasn't it had stretched out a little bit but I was overall I was quite happy with it and the cat seemed quite happy with his new chair as well the foot I got a footstool and I unpicked everything with the staples used that as pattern pieces to create new pieces and then got the staple gun out and just attached it all again so as you can see it matches quite nicely in with the chair the chair is a lot nicer than what it started out as although it is basically a chair where the cat sleeps it's it doesn't look so minging and embarrassing if you have people around so if you are interested in covering your own chair but are a bit scared about it don't be because if i can do it and i'd never recovered a whole chair before other than doing some seat pads on dining chairs then this is so this is my first attempt it's really nothing to be scared of so just go for it okay i'll see you again next time